Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to the series Real-Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at modifying audio file playback. First thing we need to do is to read an audio file in. We're going to use a technique which reads the audio file into an array. So I'll call this array audio data. Um, the size we'll not worry about because we'll resize it um, as we need to. So there's um, our array. Um, the main object which helps us to read it in is called the sound filer object. Um, it, when it uh, loads it outputs the length of the audio file in samples. Uh, it's going to be quite a big number so I'm going to give us a little bit more space to read that. Um, the message to the sound file will be read. We'll go minus resize so that the um, buffer, the audio data buffer is changed to match the size of the file. I'm going to pass in the file name as an argument um, and we need to give it the name of the audio buffer, the audio file, the array. So we connect that up. Um, we're going to use a technique where we can read the audio file from our hard drive. So um, there's an open panel uh, object which will allow us to browse our hard drive and we can use a bang to start that process. So let's uh, do that. So we go bang, it opens up this panel, we navigate to where our audio file is. I'm going to use this um, file I got from uh, Freesound uh, with some female vocals in it. And there's the audio data um, as we can see in the array read in from the sound file. So now we need to um, deal with sound playback. I might do that on the right hand side. The main um, object that we're going to use this time for sound playback um, is tab read 4 um, and we're going to tell it that we're going to read from this particular array the audio data table. Um, that of course will go out via an audio, sorry, via um, a multiply to create our volume control. We can make sure we can adjust our volume with a number box, change its range from 0 to 1. So we can connect that out and then that can in turn go to our audio output to our DAC. All right, so this is the main um, process for that. We need now to be able to get the tab read to read the audio data. Uh, what we need for this is to provide it with um, a series of numbers that go through from zero to the end uh, for the length of this particular audio file. Uh, to do that, we're going to use um, a V-line object which will create a ramp uh, going between values. This V-line, if we give it uh, the values you know, 0 to the end of the file, it will provide a ramp going from 0 to the end. Um, but we can also use um, a different other values um, and we can change the uh, angle of the ramp, which we'll get to in a second to change things like the speed of playback. But for now, we're interested in just seeing if we can play it back um, as it is. So the V-line will take um, a message. Um, we're going to pass arguments, first of all, for the start, then the end, and then the duration. So no comma there. So it's going to have two lines. One is it'll go to the start point immediately. Then it will go to an end point, which is a second variable, and it will take a certain amount of time to get there. So we need to do some calculations for some of these um, values. Um, for now, we can know that we want to start from zero. So 
uh, that can be our starting point and we can have a bang to initiate that um, we need to pack these uh, variables together in order for them to be passed into that array so there's going to be three uh, numbers zero will be the first one that's going to go into dollar one, so we're going to start at zero. The question now is what uh, what's going to be the end? Well, fortunately, the sound filer has told us what that um, value is going to be. Um, so I might create oops, an object over here to receive that value. We'll call that the end. That will go into the second inlet for our pack. And over here, we need to make sure that we send that value like so so thirdly um, we need to talk, talk about how long this is going to take to get from the beginning to the end um, this will be a calculation which will be based on the length and our sample rate okay so in order to calculate um, the duration that we want it's going to be the length divided by um, a number related to the sample rate. So the end is coming um, in again from this receive object. So I'll get it a second time here. Um, and we will need to divide it by 44.1. So I'm at uh, 44,100 samples per second as my sampling rate. Um, this time needs to be number three needs to be milliseconds and we know there's a thousand milliseconds in every uh, second sorry so a thousand samples in every millisecond so that's why it's 44.1 we've just moved the decimal place in uh, we can see what that value is if we're interested in with a number box um, and we can also pass it in as the third argument so now I'm going to um, read my file in again that will uh, re-trigger this value from the sound file be sent over to these reads the calculations will be done we didn't quite see what that was because it wasn't wide enough to show the value so there's there it is um, we can turn our volume up and let's play it back I've got that man so strong I've got that man so strong I've got that so strong I've got that man so strong all right so that's the basis for playing it back but we've got quite a bit of um, infrastructure here to do something which seems like fairly straightforward playing it back um, but there's a reason for that we're going to be providing some flexibility for things one of the first things we might want to do with varying the playback is to specify a start location and an end location um, and it's nice to be able to do that uh, slightly visually and audibly so I'm going to use a slider to specify the uh, start location and it change its properties uh, so that its width is around about the same as our array I might make it green so you can see that this is around about the same length as that so that basically the idea is that we can scroll through and the position will be rel pretty close to where we are in the audio file there so this needs of course to be the same length um, as our um, audio file is and we know that we can read different audio files of different lengths so we need to be able to specify that length we can do that um, with a message to the slider called range we know we're always going to start from zero but it's going to go to um, a particular location depending on what the length of that sound file is so I can connect that range up there if I put a number box out there for the minute you will see that at the moment we've just got the default uh, range from 0 to 127 but when we specify the range for example by removing this fader this range message is sent and now I guess again make it bigger so we can see uh, this range you can now see it's going across the entire range so that um, now 
it specifies, we can use that to specify our start location. So if I send a message, uh, let's call it start, with that value, then we'll be able to use that in a sense to specify our start um, value here. All right, going to move this down a little bit, provide a bit more space. So instead of making the start always zero, um, we will receive uh, the start location there. Um, I'm going to put and store that value in a floating point number box so that it doesn't trigger um, as I'm scrolling immediately but we can bang that like so. So now if we want to start part way through we can do so. All right. So you can hear, of course, our uh, we haven't compensated for the fact that um, our playback time is now different from there, but we'll get to that in one second. Um, another thing which we probably would want to be able to do is to stop that because that sort of drags out quite a while so I can pass a stop message to VLINE so if we start it again and we can now stop it whenever we need to for the minute. Um, a, another thing that we might want to do is to audibly hear where we are in that um, file so let's add um, an, a way of doing that We'll use the VLINE again, which is going to play. The message that we'll send um, will be to say, from wherever we are from the start time, uh, just basically get there really quickly um, and play that back. We need to pass something in for this argument. So let's move that up. So we need to get the start value so we can use a receive um, object to do that, pass that uh, start value in, dollar one will be replaced by whatever that value is, um, and it'll just take um, 100 milliseconds to get there, which is quite short. So now we've got an ability to scrub through the audio file and specify um, our start time. So of course we also want to be able to make it so that when we do specify a start time we um, adjust the duration. Um, so in order to do that we need to make sure that we're always um, recalculating um, these values. So uh, I'm going to put in um, an expression box to do a slightly more complicated um, equation to make sure that that happens. So as an expression going to take the absolute value um, that um, grabs the end time of two um, and subtracts it from the start time of one so that will give us the duration um, between the start and the end times how long we are and as we did before, we'll need to divide that by 44.1. This across, so we're just running out of space. There we go. So um, this particular um, expression will calculate for us um, the duration that we want. We need to pass the end time into the second inlet, and we need to pass the start time into the first inlet. So we can um, resend that end time, resend start time. You'll see that as we scrub, the uh, duration is also being recalculated. So we can play. So, strong, I've got that man so, strong. so we can now start from anywhere we want. Stop, move it up here. So strong. And you can hear we can start from any location, so that's going really well. 
Okay, so let's do a similar process to specify the end um, location. So we'll create um, another slider. So adjust its properties, make it also 200 long, change its color. Um, it also needs to have its range specified just like the start one did, so it covers the right values from beginning to end. And we'll make it send um, the updated end time. Like so. So if I um, read in the audio file again, that will prompt all of these parameters to be played. Um, all right, so we specify start time. Uh, we can now specify an end time. We move that to some other location. Um, going to remove the start time so that we recalculate this expression. We can tidy that up in a minute. And play. Got that man. So there we go, from the start to the end. One of the things you may have noticed is we don't have the nice sort of scrubbing on the end. So we can add another message box here to receive the end location. So as that value changes, we'll also do our scrubbing effect for the end. So here we go. So that's our end time and our start time and then play. All right. so. This is going really well. One thing which is nice is if we put our start time um, after our end time, then we should get it going backwards. All right, so, so far, so good. That's excellent. Um, all right, let's move some of this down a bit to provide a little bit more space ourselves up here because what another thing that we uh, want to add is the ability to change the speed of playback we heard that we did that accidentally before let's try and do that now deliberately so when we get this value which tells us how what the duration should be if we change that value from its thing we can um, change the speed of playback and if we play it slower it will go down in pitch and if we play it higher it will go up in pitch so we can do um, some kind of um, division here. If we divide this by one, of course, we'll get no change, but this is kind of the point. So we've got the end, we've got the start, play. Okay, so that's great. But if we instead pass an argument, a value, sorry, a number to this, get properties I think we can range from something like 0.5 which will be half the speed to 2 which will be twice the speed so then if we make this uh, slightly lower slightly lower than 1 and we reset all of our values we've got it um, slightly lower we go down further we have to recalculate so forth and even lower and recalculate and of course we can do the inverse of that we go up above one recalculate and even higher recalculate all right, so we've got control now over the start and the end um, and the uh, playback speed. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty good control. We can now play any section of our audio file. We can even go backwards and we can change the rate of playback to change its pitch. Have a go at that and uh, have fun messing with your audio file playback.